Welcome to this edition of Tech 24 from home. We hope you and yours are safe. Coming up, from ultraviolet light to new doorknob mechanisms and novel fabric, we sift through the most impressive innovations to help reduce the risk of contamination. This is scientists say the CovSARS-2 virus could become seasonal. And in Test 24, Captain Dan and Jay Cattlecar will step into a virtual cockpit and take a flying lesson from former fighter pilot Jean Richuet. Now, disinfectant solutions that use ultraviolet light have become a global hit. And while there hasn't been enough research yet to say precisely if it can stop the CovSARS-2 virus, UVC is known to kill other coronavirus. And today, a startup in Germany can barely keep up with orders. Peter O'Brien has the story. Katerina Obladen was always a bright spark. While still in school, she patented an idea to disinfect escalator handrails using ultraviolet light. Ten years on, she's made it a reality. And it enters the module like this. As Germany begins to relax some lockdown restrictions, her small team's been flooded with requests from businesses eager to reopen to a public more sensitive to health risks. A product's gone from nice to have, something which is good for the customers and pays attention to hygiene, to a must-have. The box is hidden safely inside any escalator unit, and its three lamps blast the handrail with germicidal short wavelength ultraviolet, called UVC. UVC is a kind of radiation and has been used to sterilize things for decades. If you point it at a microorganism, the organism's DNA will absorb the energy and become warped, destroying or disactivating it. It has the same effect on many viruses, though there isn't yet conclusive evidence that UVC can stop this specific coronavirus. Despite this, many equipment suppliers have reported record sales, and UVC is being deployed in different ways around the world. To disinfect airports in the US, hospital wards in Ecuador, masks in Thailand and buses in China. The advantage of the ultraviolet disinfection method is that it's very efficient and less time-consuming, as well as requiring less labor and disinfection costs. As quick and easy as it may be, UVC is very dangerous and requires specialist equipment and training to use. It can burn your skin in a matter of seconds, so think about that before you take a UVC bath. And it's time to welcome our in-house experts, Dan and Jake Hadelkar. Hello there, Dan. Hi, Julia. So tell us more about other technologies that can help us keep our environment as germ-free as possible, starting with a box that can scan and disinfect our smartphones. The Momax UV box, as the name suggests, is a device that is equipped with a source of ultraviolet light. It is these ultraviolet rays that kill germs present on the surfaces of smartphones, earbuds, and watches. Once one of these items is placed inside the box, it takes 18 minutes in the quick mode and 30 minutes in the standard mode to disinfect. The box also serves as a wireless charging station for smartphones. Now talking about screens, a French company has developed a touchscreen terminal called SoClean that has antimicrobial properties. Silver ions are encapsulated in its glass surface they are released frequently and it is these ions that neutralize bacteria. These terminals are meant to be installed at public places like shopping complexes and hotels. Now, healthcare experts have repeatedly emphasized the need to clean our hands frequently in order to stop the spread of microbes. Now, a team of uh, researchers at the ICAM Engineering School in Toulouse have come up with a solution that enables us to use elbows instead of hands to operate doors. It is the primary concern of caregivers to not transmit germs with the hands, so we spend our time washing them. These are new habits that we'll have to maintain depending on the situation, which will last a little while. The French startup Schoon has come up with a solution to ensure door handles remain clean all the time. This is in the form of a battery-powered ring 
that is attached to a door handle. When a door is opened, the ring moves along the handle and deposits a thin film of disinfectant that keeps the handle free of germs. Back to you, Julia. Well, thank you very much for that Danage cattle car. Now, Europol has warned that cybercrime is on the rise, especially since the beginning of the pandemic. And one of the sectors that is booming is the amount of counterfeit products that are sold online. Well, let's listen in to Catherine DeBole, Europol's director. Organized crime group, they, they use the opportunity because they use the fear of the people and they use the fact that people need answers to their questions and that they want to protect themselves. Be aware of what you buy, uh, that it's not a counterfeited product because it's of uh, less quality and it can uh, be um, detrimental for your own health. Well, for more on this story, I'm going to bring in Antoine Tesquet Tedeschi, the development director at LTU Tech here in Paris. Thank you, Antoine, for joining us. Hi, Julia. Thanks for having me. So the startup you work for is uh, specialized in image and object recognition, and you managed to raise 4.5 million euros. So congratulations for that. Uh, you've actually witnessed firsthand how uh, criminals keep on innovating to keep on trafficking online. So what are some of their techniques? Well, uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we've noticed that Mafia needs to find new ways to make money. Uh, one of these is to create fake ads on marketplaces and try to play on the general anxiety based on the shortage of uh, products like gloves, hand sanitizers or masks. One of the techniques is to avoid getting caught by using the names or the product names in their uh, ads, in the description of the products. What they do instead is uh, to to use the official image of the product or the logo of the brand to create the confusion to the consumers. So um, people place uh, orders online and in the best case, they never get the order. In the worst case, they are supplied with counterfeit products. Now, Antoine, over at LTU Tech, you're using a technology called computer vision to keep on tracking these fake ads. Uh, how exactly does it work? Yes, LTU is a company expert in uh, computer vision, which is a capacity of a computer to analyze and recognize images. Um, we've developed our technology here in Paris, and it is used today to help crawlers online to find those uh, fake ads. Um, what they do, what the technology does, is to analyze each individual image. Uh, published on marketplaces and find uh, where official products are featured. Thanks to that, we are allowed to uh, find those ads and analyze if the seller is an official retailer of, or just uh, a counterfeiter. So, of course, we've been talking a lot about fake treatments in the wake of COVID-19, but there are many other applications. What are they precisely? Well, computer vision has been used for some time now by authorities to find items online. Those items could be uh, counterfeit products, as we just uh, talked about. Uh, it could be also artworks, artworks that has been stolen since uh, World War II or uh, from uh, uh, housebreaking. Um, we help them to uh, monitor the marketplace like local ads or nice uh, agencies uh, selling, uh, selling artworks. And, uh, and try to find them when they reappear. Uh, we also help those authorities um, to monitor um, specific items uh, on the web, on the deep web, but also on the dark web. It could be firearms, it could be drug, fake money, and other kind of stuff. Antoine Tesquet Tedeschi, thank you very much indeed for your time. And we're gonna buckle up now for Test 24. And this week, Dan and Jake Hadlecar is about to live one of his greatest dreams. He's learning virtually, but he's learning how to fly a plane. Well, Julia, a few years ago, I experienced the thrill of G-forces during a ride in a glider. But that was as a passenger. This time, there were no G-forces as I trained in a virtual world. But because I took controls of the Christian Eagle 2 aircraft, the ride was equally exciting. 
Under the guidance of Pierre-Henri Chouet, a former fighter pilot, I was able to execute some really cool stunts. During our conversation, I asked Pierre-Henri if the software we were using, the Digital Combat Simulator World, provided a realistic experience and whether it was used for actual pilot training. This is what he had to say. It is really realistic. I like to quantify it as 85% of the real deal. What you're missing is basically the fear of, of, of crashing, of dying. The G-force, as you're pulling on the stick, you don't feel the gravity on you and the pressure changes as well. So outside those three elements, you basically have all the procedures, all the flight characteristics. So it is extremely accurate and flight schools use it even in the military. And if you want to upgrade the experience, you can uh, put a VR headset on and with this VR headset, you'll be able to move your head around. You'll be able to use HTC Vive or Oculus Rift as plug and play. Very simple to do, and you can have a lot of fun. That was Pierre-Henri Chouet. As you can see, Julia, I executed some stunts like loops and rolls and also managed to land the plane on an aircraft carrier. You can watch these stunts either from inside the cockpit or from the outside. You can also activate the smoke system, which enhances the visual appeal of the stunts you are performing. Of course, other than DCS World, there are other popular simulators like Microsoft's Flight Simulator and X-Plane 11. Back to you, Julia. Well, thank you very much, Dan and Jay Cattle Car. That actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it and do stay with us here on France 24.